Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Our webinar topic today is better results in half the time. The three missing pieces your doctor left out that may be killing your results. Now, this presentation has really been a culmination of Haven and what we've seen in the last three years of practice. Um, we see these issues consistently happening with the people that call our office looking for help. So we've kind of consolidated all the information here of the three missing pieces that we see most consistently that are not getting people to where they wanna be despite all their hard work, okay? So a little disclaimer before we start. And I'm sorry, I hear just a little bit of noise. If everyone could just mute yourselves, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so today you're not gonna find out what you need individually to get the health you want. This is just about an opportunity. It's about an open door to see if this makes sense to you and you want to take action on it. And you know, we believe that once you see the healing potential as possible, then you're on the path to heal. That's the bottom line. So this is an open door, it's an opportunity, okay? My goal today is to show you that healing is simple and straightforward when you start from the correct foundation. We've made healing so complex, so complex, and it's really not that difficult if you do the right things, if you come from the right foundation, okay? So I want you to make a commitment today. If you're struggling to get the help that you want, despite all your efforts, and this message resonates with you, prioritize your own health and schedule free consult with us. We always, anytime we have a consult with someone, we always try to put them on the next best step that they need in order to get the help, whether it's with us or with a referral with someone that we know. So schedule a consult with us if this resonates with you. Okay, does this sound like you? You've seen a functional medicine doctor, and still not gotten results. You've seen people in the alternative world. You spent potentially hundreds of dollars on labs and supplements, but despite all that effort, you still feel like you're at square one. The best medical specialists can't seem to figure out what's happening to you. You're going to see specialists in different fields. They're like, I don't know, things are normal, not sure or you're doing all the right things, you're eating healthy, you're taking vitamins, you're doing yoga, but you still feel crappy despite everything that you're doing, okay? Please everyone, if you could mute yourselves, sorry. Thanks for the uh, public service announcement. Okay, so what these experiences lead to are a lot of false belief systems around healing. You may think my body must be damaged in some permanent way, and I won't be able to reach optimal health if all these alternative medicine practitioners can't help me, all these medical doctors can't help me. Finding health is so complicated and expensive that I will never get there. I've spent thousands of dollars on labs. I'm still at square one, so it must be so expensive that I just have to settle with how I feel. Or if the best doctors can't figure out what's wrong, there must be something really deep and serious and rare that's going on. I must be the only one who experiences these issues because it seems like everyone else is fine despite the fact that I'm, <clears throat> I'm suffering. All my friends seem to be able to go out and go out to restaurants and eat and do whatever, and I'm suffering, so there must be something really wrong with me, right? I must be the only one who experiences this. So... It's easy to get trapped in these false belief systems when we've had the past experiences that we've had in the health space and not gotten the results that we expect. Yes. Uh, Jess, are you able to mute people on your end? I don't know if you can do that. No, right. I don't have the ability. I, I think I can do that. Okay. Okay, yeah, cool. We're good. We're good. We're good. So, um, what we want to do here is change the paradigm, change 
our belief system around the healing potential that's possible. Okay. Why do I believe this? Because I've been in that position. I've struggled my whole life with bad digestive issues and anxiety. They've kind of changed over time. When I was a kid, it was like a lot of motion sickness, um, lots of stomach pain. I, I almost went to the hospital a few times because I thought I had appendicitis, um, really bad eczema and anxiety. And then as I got older, it kind of developed into bloating, um, constipation, diarrhea, so I've been in a bad place. And I remember taking this photograph of myself when I was really feeling awful. And, you know, that's like a good impression of like where I do not want to be right there. Um, so today I feel good most of the time. I'm not perfect. I still have my own health goals. I'm not going to say that I'm 100%, but I feel good most of the time. I'm living the life I want to live. And I think most importantly, I'm empowered to heal no matter what I experience. So there's not a fear associated with having symptoms because I understand fundamentally what healing is and how to create it in my life. I know how to get back on track. Okay. So we've seen countless patients healing in our office. We have a lot of nice Google reviews that people have left us. So a lot of people are transforming and you'll see a lot of words like transformational. You know, that's what we're really all about is transformation. If your healthcare isn't leading to a significant change in your life, then it's our perspective that there's more out there. There's more out there for you. Okay. What are people healing from? People are healing from all sorts of issues. And I think there's still um, a limiting belief around holistic medicine that it's limited to like only people that, you know, it's like a lifestyle. So it's, it's just to like make you feel a little bit better, give you more energy, but it, it can't really like reverse a chronic autoimmune condition, but that's not true. It can, and we've seen it, you know, we've seen people reverse like really serious digestive issues, like Crohn's ulcerative colitis, um, really bad female hormone issues. I can't believe the stories I've heard from some of my female patients about the periods that they experience like knives being stabbed into their uterus and crazy things, crazy autoimmune problems, chronic skin issues, of course, anxiety and depression. We work with a lot of pregnant women or women who are struggling with infertility, um, chronic pain, all of these, all of these issues, it's no different from your body scraping you scraping your elbow and your body communicating that there's pain there and healing the issue. It feels like for some reason that chronic issues are different than like you breaking your arm and then, you know, your body knitting the bones together or you getting a cut in your body knitting that together. It's the same process. It's just a longer time frame. So you're able, we are all able to heal from very serious problems when we understand the foundation of health. Okay, so what we do is we take a common sense approach for those who want to take responsibility to regain their health and optimize their life. And I just want to focus on this word responsibility because there's many, there's many ways up the mountain, okay? We're not here to say that we're the only ones that have truth. There's many ways to heal. There's many ways to do it. What we see, what we believe in our opinion is that if you want to have long lasting, sustained health, that requires you to take responsibility for your day-to-day actions. No one is going to change the way that you eat, the way that you live, the way that you talk to yourself, the way that you breathe, the actions that you take. That's your responsibility. And that's a lot of where these issues come from. So it's our opinion, it's our belief that taking responsibility is what leads to long lasting change. But again, that's not for everybody. Some people want to continue to live the lifestyle that they're currently living and just kind of manage the issue. That's, that's totally fine. Everyone can do however, whatever they'd like. That's, that's what we're all about is empowering you to live the life that you want. But we're really communicating to those who know, like, yes, I I understand. I have to take responsibility. So that's kind of who we communicate to, who we work with. 
Okay, short, short bio by myself. I, I'm a doctor of naturopathic medicine. I was valedictorian, Colby was salutatorian. That was really fun at our school. Um, owner and founder of Haven with Colby. I've had numerous trainings in different um, facets of holistic medicine, homeopathy, somatic experiencing, which is like a trauma-based um, psychology kind of technique, yoga, a holistic counseling, hydrotherapy, nutrition. Very serious headshot. A dude named Dan Winters took this headshot and he's taken uh, a lot of headshots of people you might know. So trivia question. I don't know what the prize should be, but Dan Winters took this photo of Tupac in 1994 and he hung out with him all day. He's kind of like a photojournalist. And Dan said to Tupac, what music should I put on? If anyone can guess the album that they played from start to finish in 1994, we're talking 90s, I'll give you a little hint, it's 90s. I don't, we'll have to give some big prize because I'd be amazed if anyone could get that. Leave a, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any guesses, okay? So he's taking a lot of photos here. So the three missing pieces that your doctor left out that may be killing your results. Number one, people over protocols. Number two, heal the hole in the middle. Number three, the four-legged stool. This may all be gibberish to you, so let's break each one of these apart. I want to tell the story of Christina. Christina was a patient that we saw um, a couple years ago, and um, she, she was 36 when she came to see us, and I think she's a really, really good example of the kind of person we treat and the experience that she had before she came to see us and how we were different in the way that we approached her health and how she got the results that she really wanted, okay? So um, she, Christina was living, she's living downtown Chicago. She works in sales for marketing uh, tech company. High interest in health, very, very motivated in, in uh, taking personal responsibility for her health. Sees various trainers and she takes lots of classes, soul cycle, hot yoga, berries, boxing. She walks everywhere throughout the city, many miles a day to work groceries errands, okay? So here were her health concerns when she, when she came in. She had been consistently gaining weight, five pounds a year for seven years. So she was about 35 pounds overweight of what she wanted to be. She said no matter what she did, cleansing, calorie restriction, high intensity exercise, six times a week, nothing worked. She had chronic digestive issues, including... Uh, abdominal pain, diarrhea, despite avoiding gluten, dairy, sugar, processed foods. So she's putting in the work. She's trying. She's trying to avoid the foods as best she can. She is fatigued to the point where she's not able to get out of bed despite eight to 10 hours of sleep sometimes. She even meditates before bed. And she's got lots of hormone imbalances, hot flashes, restless sleep. She gets dry mouth in the middle of the night. She's diagnosed with adrenal fatigue and has a history of, of abnormal periods. Okay, so here's what she tried. She saw multiple medical doctors when she was living in San Francisco and they did multiple ultrasounds on her abdomen, never diagnosed with anything, didn't help. She moved to Chicago. She went to see one alternative health facility in Chicago. They ran a salivary hormone panel. They diagnosed her with adrenal fatigue among other imbalances and they put her on a supplement protocol. It helped her temporarily with the sleep and the hot flashes, but then they came back. And she went to another alternative health center in Chicago. They ran food sensitivity testing on her. They put her on some cleanses. They did some cleansing with her, put on some enzymes, and they did a caloric restriction diet to help her to lose weight. Still had stomach pains, bloating, diarrhea, didn't lose any weight. So here's the kind of person that she is. And again, I want to make this clear because it's like, it's like this kind of person is so frustrating because you're putting in all the work and you're not seeing the results despite all the energies. Like she's highly motivated. This wasn't like someone who wasn't like putting in the time and effort. She takes full responsibility for her own health. She's eating well. She's exercising a lot, walking, doing her own research, seeing other practitioners. She's totally open to new things. She's trying different cleanses on her own, different lifestyle practices, blue light blocking, 
trying various superfoods, trying different exercise routines. And she does believe that her body can heal if we figure it out. So she's totally committed. Okay. So let's look at the missing pieces and see how they fit with Christina. So missing piece number one, people over protocols. Do you ever feel like this guy? There's so much noise in the alternative health space with completely opposite diets, completely op opposite suggestions. And it's very hard to tell what's left from right up from down. Protocol-based healing has certain characteristics that I want to point out. Okay. The first is that there's a lots of overgeneralizations. Like everyone should avoid dairy. Some people say, well, we're the only animal that consumes the milk from another animal. So that's bad. It's an overgeneralization about something. Or one diet is right for everyone. Some people say we should all eat like our caveman ancestors and eat paleo. Or we should all eat vegan because animal food is bad for you. Or we should all eat carnivore. So it's a one size fits all. Or people with the same diseases should get the same treatment. So everyone with heart disease should eat the same diet. Everyone with SIBO should eat the same diet. Everyone with autoimmune paleo, or, uh, um, sorry, autoimmune condition should eat an autoimmune paleo diet. So everyone who fits a certain disease category should get the same treatment. Oftentimes it's that correcting lab values is the most important thing. So in Christina's case, she got lots of hormone plant panels run. And the main goal with her previous practitioners was let's correct the, hor the hormones. Let's correct the labs. But we never asked, where's the underlying root? Why are the hormones imbalanced? If we just correct them with supplements, what's that going to do? And that brings us to our next one, supplements over lifestyle changes. We call this green allopathy. We kind of have like a, you know, allopathy is conventional medicine and we kind of have a conventional medicine hangover in alternative medicine because we still do things like giving people pills for ills. It's just sup supplements for symptoms. You see, these are all protocols, protocol-based healing. You have low cortisol, take a cortisol manager. You have this, take that. You see? We also can get caught up in fads and trends. Very popular in the alternative medicine world. Like everyone should drink celery juice. Everyone should intermittently fast. Hit workouts are the best workouts. Everyone should take CBD. IV therapy, very popular. You see, so it's confusing and convoluted. We can get caught up in all these fads and trends. Oftentimes things are based on large scale research because we have government agencies that are conducting mass scale studies in order to find mass scale information to give to the population. I'm not saying that can't be helpful, but oftentimes we see this phenomenon where you're, we're constantly switching the recommendations because of new information. And that's probably because different individuals need different things. So when we average out the population, we're gonna get different results, you see? Or good marketing campaigns. I love collagen. I've prescribed collagen to all sorts of patients, but I'm just saying it's easy to get caught up in the marketing campaigns, the fads, the trends, you see? This is all protocol-based healing. Everyone should be on collagen. Cholesterol is bad for everyone, you see? They're generalizations. If we just take a look at the common sense, our ancestors evolved all over the planet in literally opposite environments from the tropics to the, to the uh, Arctic. Literally completely different environments. It wouldn't make sense that everyone would need the same thing, right? If you just look at the population around the world, it's like, we are all so different. We are all so unique and we all need unique interventions. 
So people-based healing, sorry, this slide didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. So every person is completely unique on a different life path with different goals, different needs, right? It's people-based healing. Finding out the root cause requires understanding the person. The only way we're going to able to understand where this issue came from is understanding who you are, not by your label, not by a generalization. Different diets for different people, plant-based to carnivorous, obviously, because we all evolved in different ecological niches. So we all have genetics of vastly different kinds of people. We all need different diets. That's why some people do well on plant-based, some people do well on animal-based, right? People with the same diseases are all treated differently. When you treat someone with migraines, every single person is gonna get a different treatment plan, okay? Three more here, lab values are indicative of deeper imbalances. We're not treating the labs, the labs are only giving us information. It's fine to take labs, but we have to contextualize that into the person's life. Supplements are only supplementary to a good diet. We, in the alternative medicine space, we tend to rely on supplements so much like, like meds, right? And how you live your life is of primary importance. So with Christina, she tried a couple protocols previous to seeing us. She did a supplement protocol to adjust her hormones based on her lab work. So she was... Per uh, prescribed a progesterone cream, cortisol manager supplement. But really the real problem was that she was over-exercising. She was exercising like six times a week, doing HIIT workouts, cycling, super hard. That was never addressed. It's like, well, yeah, no wonder why your cortisol is through the roof because you're just so stressed at your job and so and stressing your body even more, trying to lose weight, trying to work out harder. If we're not looking at the whole person here and understanding the, how they're living their life, we're gonna miss that, right? Her liver was also congested from the food intolerances that she was consuming. L your liver is a really important organ as far as hormone detoxification. Then she went to another clinic. She did a digestion and detox protocol. Again, cleansing, low calorie enzymes, food sensitivities. The real problem was that she was eating her food intolerance all the time. And she was super stressed, which was affecting her gut. The cleansing that she was doing at this clinic was making the problem way worse because she's already, her cortisol is through the roof. But again, they put her on a protocol. They tried to fit her into a box and said, well, you just need to cleanse because you're having digestive issues. That didn't work, right? So we have to understand the person. So the most effective approach is individualized to you. It's not based on a disease. It's not based on lab work. And most importantly, it educates and empowers you to change the way that you live. That's what's going to really make the difference. How, is, how are your actions on a day-to-day -day basis helping or hurting your health? Missing piece number two, heal the hole in the middle. We're going to take any questions that anyone has at the end. So please hold your questions. If you have them, write them down. We'll take them all at the end, okay? So heal the hole in the middle. Your digestive system is a tube running through your mouth to your anus. It's literally a tube that's completely hollow running through your whole body. So that's the hole in the middle. Nutrients coming into your body and waste leaving the body happens almost primarily in your digestive tract. Like 95, 98%. So if your digestive system is compromised, that's going to have a real big impact on your body getting nutrients and you being able to detoxify wastes, right? Your gut is a second brain. There's so many neurons in your digestive tract. It's literally like a second brain and there's more communication from your gut to your brain than your brain to your gut. Your gut's also a jungle. There's like 10 times the genetic material in the microorganisms living in your gut than in your entire body, genetically. So we truly are like all of these creatures, right? And they're primarily stored in our gut. 
80% of the immune system is in the digestive tract because we have all these villi and microvilli, these little hairs. So it increases the surface area dramatically of the digestive tract so that we can absorb all of the nutrients that we need. But in order for our bodies to protect that area, we have to line that whole surface with lymphatic tissue. That's your immune system. That's why 80% of your immune system is in your gut because their immune system has to protect a tennis court sized area. Okay. So if you want to decrease inflammation, detoxify the body, calm the immune system, prevent sensitivities and allergies, those come from the immune system, absorb nutrients, you have to heal the hole in the middle. It doesn't matter who we see. It doesn't matter if you have an autoimmune condition, doesn't matter if you have a female hormone issue, skin issue. This is always primary because it holistically connects so much of the body together. And so often people come to see us, they tried different protocols and they haven't addressed their digestive tract. And it's like, it's no wonder why you're not healing, right? Because it's such a critical piece. Okay. What we see consistently is the number one dietary problem preventing the gut from healing is food intolerances. If you guys follow us, then you know this. We preach about this all the time. Every person that we see is eating their food intolerance, period. Because the food industry is complex. There's lots of additives that come from different food intolerances supplement additives from food intolerances and food combinations that we're not aware of. And that has a really big impact on the digestive tract. Food intolerances are genetic enzyme deficiencies passed down from our ancestors. So they're different from sensitivities and allergies. I'm not going to get into that. It's not the place for that today. They're different from sensitivities and allergies because those are coming from the immune system. These are enzyme deficiencies that don't allow us to digest food properly. And that can chronically affect the gut. So we see that with almost everyone. Okay. Remember, our ancestors evolved in different ecological niches, right? From the, the Arctic to the equator. And we didn't evolve with a buffet of foods. So it makes sense that we all have different food intolerances based on our ancestry, based on our genetics. What we see with the food intolerance evaluation is that most mainstream diets don't eliminate even the most common intolerances, fruit, potato, egg, meat, and dairy. They eliminate some of them, but not all of them. So a lot of people will go from one diet to the next. They try the vegan diet. They try the paleo diet. They try Whole30. And all of them may help a little bit, but they keep bouncing around because they're not actually addressing their own unique personal issue. They're trying protocols. And I totally understand why anyone would do that. I did the same, right? So this gives you information, knowledge is power. You can identify food combinations that are problematic. So putting together your meals, you can identify food additives in your products and you can identify problematic supplements. So many people are taking supplements that are actually hurting them for no fault of their own, right? Because they're not individualized for the person. They're based on a protocol, you see? So a few tips on digestive healing. This is just like a little bonus here. There's, there's all sorts of different ways to address the digestive tract. And this is just giving you a sense of how you can individualize digestive support. You know, we hear digestive support, like it's this, this, catch all thing, but really there's all these different aspects of the digestive tract. So if the problem is coming from your stomach, which is probably going to happen up higher up, like right below your rib cage, like immediate bloating after meals, the solution for that is bitters, apple cider vinegar, or hydrochloric acid tablets before your meal to give your body more stomach acid. If it's coming from the pancreas, that means that you need enzymes because the pancreas produces enzymes that break down your food after it leaves the stomach. That's going to lead to a lot of bloating, like bloating that happens like 30 minutes after a meal. If the problem is coming from your liver or gallbladder, that may be like difficulty digesting fats, for example, 
you have trouble digesting fats. Beets or beet tablets, very good for cleansing the liver, gallbladder, and bile salts. If the issue is coming from the small intestine, it may be because the small intestine lining is inflamed and you need herbs that are soothing to the digestive tract. And if the issue is coming from the colon, maybe constipation, things like this, maybe diarrhea, probiotics. A lot of people take probiotics when they get bloating, but really that's like the last step in the whole process. You see, so we have to understand where the issue is coming from with each individual. So for Christina, she's been on a quest to heal her digestive tract, and she tried a few things. Despite trying to avoid dairy and eating different, she was eating different sources of hidden dairy consistently. So she was trying to avoid dairy. Her food intolerance was dairy, and she was still eating it in salads, for example, because there's lactoferrin sprayed on leafy greens. She was taking probiotics every day trying to heal her gut, and probiotics came from dairy lactobacillus-based probiotics. Even non-dairy milks have dairy additives. Food industry is crazy. So she's trying to avoid dairy. She's still eating it all the time. It made a huge difference for her when we figured that out. She was also consuming her food combination, fruit and sugar, in various products that she was eating. Even in little amounts, you know, sugar can be even in like health food products, like good condiments, right? So she realized she was eating sugar, cut that out. And in her plan, we eliminated her intolerance. We gave her digestive support that was specific based on her metabolic hair analysis that we ran. Her issue was mainly coming from her liver. So we gave her liver support and then castor oil packs for additional liver support. Okay. Coffee break. So we want to do something a little special right now. We want to keep promoting these webinars. So if you take a selfie of yourself, take a selfie so we can see your face, we can see the screen, post it on Instagram, tag Haven Holistic Health. We're going to send you a Venmo for 10 bucks tomorrow to get your matcha latte. So Jess, you're going to keep track of this. If anyone takes a selfie, take a selfie, post it on IG, put a link in the comments and give us your Venmo handle. We'll send you 10 bucks a month. Yeah, guys. Whoa, Christina, did you really guess counting crows or did I tell you that? No, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of both. And I remember hearing that story once a long time ago. Oh, so you kind of cheated. <laughs> Tupac, awesome. Tupac Shakur told my buddy Dan Winters to put on Counting Crows while they were hanging out. That's one that would make a lot of Tupac fans maybe roll over in their grave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Christina, we're going to throw you an extra 10 for the Counting Crows. Okay, so take a selfie of yourself and we're going to continue here, okay? <clears throat> so uh, missing piece number three here, the four-legged stool. The four-legged stool of healing. What is this crazy thing? What we mean by this is there's four primary pillars that you can see in all holistic paradigms throughout the world for thousands of years, all called by different names. Detoxification, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. What we see in the naturopathic field and acupuncture in the Chinese medicine world, in Ayurveda, in all these different healing paradigms, all holistic models have these four components. And what we see consistently is that people aren't addressing all these four components in their plan. And that's why they're not getting the results they expect.
despite putting a lot of effort into one or two of these pillars. You see? So let's break each one of them down briefly. What detoxification means, there's a lot of misconceptions. It means that you're eliminating more than you're absorbing into your body, meaning that you're not holding on to metabolic wastes. You're getting rid of those and that's getting stored in your body, right? So there's many routes that our body has for detoxification in order to eliminate metabolic wastes. Our body is this beautiful organism. So we have all these channels and discharges in order to get rid of the metabolic wastes that accumulate naturally with all of our natural physiological processes. We mentioned the digestive tract is a big one with stool, vomit if we're, if we're sick, kidneys and bladder with urine, skin, skin with sweat, lymphatics create mucus, our lungs breathe out toxins and wastes that are aerosolized. Even the female reproductive system with menstruation, that's a cleansing, you see, and even emotions. So these are all attempts for the body to excrete wastes. And when there's an issue with one of these discharges, it tells us the body's having trouble with detoxification. And we know that that's an issue. In Christina's case, she was actually having a lot of loose stools, which meant her body was trying to get rid of something. You see, the body's very intelligent. It's not stupid. It doesn't just do these things because it's damaged. It's trying to have an effect. But we have to understand each person to see why is the body communicating that to us? Why is the body trying to do this? So that's detox. Nutrition. What part of your body is not 100% made of what you eat, drink, breathe, absorb, and think? A lot of what you eat, right? This should be common sense. All of our cells are turning over all the time, and we need to give our, our bodies the most nutrition in order to efficiently turn over our cells, to make more cells, to heal. And what we see in today's modern culture is that we have a big nutritional problem. This is the 80 year decline of mineral content in one apple. From 1914 to 1992, you can look at the different minerals here and how they've declined over time. This is the percentage decline in an apple. This is happening all over the food industry because our soils are getting depleted, right? And then we have long transport times, food is sitting in the storage for a long time. Weston Price is a famous nutritionist and scientist who went around the world and he studied different cultures. He looked at cultures in the same geographical location that were eating their traditional diet versus eating their, the modernized food like white sugar, white flour, vegetable oils. And he took photos of all these individuals. He noted how many cavities they had in their teeth and chronic degenerative diseases they had. And it's amazing, like this person lives uh, totally off the grid, no modern dentistry whatsoever, no modern medicine, perfectly white straight teeth. Like where would we be in our culture if we didn't have modern dentists to put our teeth back together? We'd all look like pirates. That's because we grew up in a, nutritionally depleted environment, okay? This is the nutritional density of the different groups that Weston Price researched compared to the modern Western diet in the 20th century. So Eskimos, apologies for the terminology. This was 1930s, Eskimos, Inuits. They had 500% more calcium than our modern diets, 500% phosphorus, 790 magnesium, et cetera. You get the picture. Huge difference in nutritional density because they're eating foods off the land, traditional nutrient dense foods off the land. This makes a really big difference, guys, not getting this nutritional uh, density. It makes a big difference for healing. And we see consistently people aren't getting enough nutrients. 
despite all their best efforts, right? Lifestyle, pillar three. We evolved over millions of years to live in the natural conditions on planet Earth. What do we mean by that? Planetary conditions like clean, structured water, fresh air, toxin-free environment, cold water bathing, like bathing in streams, for example, natural movement. They say that traditional people walked like five miles a day, easy, right? Tribal community living, direct contact with the earth, grounding. When's the last time you put your feet on the bare earth? If you work with us probably this morning, right? 24 hour light and dark cycle. So our circadian rhythm is in alignment with the planetary motion, a monthly lunar cycle. Many women are disconnected from their cycle, especially with birth control, but there's natural cycles that regulate all of our hormones, right? Four seasons. So if we're not living in harmony with the planetary conditions in which we evolved on over millions of years, then of course there's gonna be problems, there's gonna be imbalances. And a lot of our modern society is not built to be in harmony with the planetary conditions. These are lifestyle factors. And then mindset. Aligning your mind and emotions with your body so the healing force can flow through. This is a good metaphor here. Oftentimes false belief systems, like I can't heal, I'm ugly, no one will ever love me, this will never work. It's a false belief system in the mind that then trickles down to the other bodies, the emotional body and the physical body. And this can be oftentimes a primary root cause. It's very easy to overlook when we're looking at the body mechanistically and trying to balance the hormones, you know, figure out the diet, but the way that you're talking to yourself every day is affecting the healing process. It's a very important pillar. It's just as important as nutrition. It has to be in a place for certain people, not everyone. Sometimes that's not a root cause with many people it is. We're multidimensional beings which means we need multidimensional healing. We need multidimensional strategies, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. So here's what we say with the four-legged stool. If you got four legs on that stool, you're strong AF. It's hard to knock you down. You're resilient. That's what health is, right? If you have three legs, you still have a very solid foundation. You're still standing, it's, it's very solid. If you only have two of these legs, you're falling over. And if you only have one, you're on the floor. Many protocol-based healing modalities are going to be based around one, maybe two of these. Like it's all focused on cleansing, but now we're not giving the body the nutrient it needs and it's getting depleted. Or it's all focused on the lifestyle, but we're not focusing on getting the, the toxins out of the system. Each one of these pillars is totally individualized to each person. That's why you have to understand who each person is in order to create a plan for them that's really gonna get them to the mountaintop. So Christina, her legs of the stool, what did we do? We did detox, but we made it sure it was gentle. We didn't wanna stress her body more and we focused on the liver. So we did castor oil packs. We also did dry skin brushing, not bruising, brushing and cold showers to get the blood flowing, to get the lymphatics draining. Nutrition, she had a history of calorie restriction with the previous uh, clinic that she went to, and that led to deficiencies. Same with the cleansing. So we focused on traditional foods, giving her body the nutrients it needs, supplements to support her hormone system, and strategies to improve her blood sugar. Really important. We didn't just give her supplements. We focused to make sure that she's actually supporting her blood sugar, which is going to have the biggest effect on her cortisol, right? Lifestyle, being overworked was a huge factor. This was literally, I think, and I, Christina's on the call and she can maybe share. I think this was the linchpin in Christina's entire plan. She was doing six 
HIIT workouts, hot yoga, soul cycle, trying harder and harder to lose weight. And she wasn't losing any weight despite how hard she worked because her cortisol was through the roof. And everyone missed that. They didn't look at the lifestyle. They tried to put her on a protocol to heal the hormones and heal the gut. And what she did is she traded the HIIT workouts for walks on the lake. It sounds like I'm making this up, literally. Walks on the lake. And I don't even know how much weight she lost because Christina doesn't weigh herself, but it was visible by working out less. Some people need to work out more. Some people need to work out less. So hearing that hit workouts are good for you, good for everyone, it's, it's not a complete picture, right? Because that was actually making her a lot worse. It all depends on what you need. We also give her sleep practices to improve her sleep and healing. And mindset did nightly journaling for self-reflection in order to connect deeper with her healing potential and process some of the things that were happening throughout the day, socially, at work, et cetera. So in summary, guys, these are the three pieces that we see consistently, consistently are not in place, which is why despite all your efforts, despite all the money you're spending, the efforts you're trying to get better, it's not leading you to the promised land because we're following protocols that are not individualized. We're following overgeneralized protocols that aren't individualized to us. We are not thinking about the digestive tract as being the center of a lot of the metabolic processes. So we're ignoring that or we're missing legs of our stool. Guys, if we have these in place, people can heal from the most serious conditions imaginable. We're just aligning the body with what it needs. This isn't complex. It's not easy, but it's not complex, you see? And that's, an, that's almost like another piece. It's like, it's like a spidey sense. If things are overly complex, it's probably not in alignment with truth because truth, the deepest truths are often the most simple. Um, sorry, this, we already did the slide. Where are we at here? Christina today, her hot flashes are gone. They're completely gone. Her stomach issues are resolved. There's no pain. She's at normal stools. She feels much more balanced and empowered. She actually understands what's in the food that she's consuming. She understands the concept of how to heal using the four-legged stool. Again, she lost notable amount of weight. I don't know how much. She doesn't check the scale, which I love. I actually said to her, it had been a number of months I saw her and she came in and I said, you look like you're glowing. Like it was so noticeable the change that she went through because she just aligned herself with basic strategies. Okay, so here's one option for you guys. We do personal health consulting. It's kind of like our flagship service. Okay, if you want to find out your personal root cause issues, preventing you from having the health you want, then schedule a free consult with us. We'll help you identify your unique food intolerances, help you create the perfect diet for you. No more guessing, no more hopping around different diets, trying to avoid different foods. Completely unique diet for you. We'll create a completely individualized plan for you. It's practical and sustainable using the four-legged stool methodology. So take the first step, sign up for a free consultation with us. There's, no, there's nothing lost from this besides 20 minutes of your time. We will do the best, even if it's not the right fit. For whatever reason, we will do the best to put you in a position to take the next step to help you. Okay? There's a lot of healing out there. But we do want to prioritize the people that want to take action and make a commitment so that they can live the life that they want to live. So we're opening five slots tomorrow for anyone who wants to have a free consult with us. We're opening up these slots special for the people on the webinar. 
five slots. If you want to do this, email us. And Jess, if you could write this in the comments, email us at hello at havenholistichealth.com and say, I am ready to live the life that I deserve. Hello at havenholistichealth.com. I am ready to live the health that I deserve. The first five people who email us, we're prioritizing you. We'll get you on the schedule tomorrow. We'll email you. We'll prioritize you. We'll get you in right away. Okay? Thanks so much for tuning in. Any questions? So we actually have the winner for the gift card. Oh, great. Turn roll. <laughs> okay, so it's Tanner. Sorry if I don't say your name right. Tanner Hale. Yes, uh, Tanner, you said that <laughs> almost <laughs> exactly right. Wow. Wow, thank you. how about that? Nice. That's awesome. Wow. Awesome. I'll send over an email. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Amazing. Big winner. Questions? And Colby, please, uh, if we have any questions from the crowd, we can, can hop in here as well. I did have one question. Yes. Uh, I'll turn on my camera. Um, I, I heard you say that some of the other holistic options like might be based on blood work. Um, and maybe what makes this a little different is the hair analysis. And I was just wondering like, what are the differences between um, results from blood work versus results from a hair analysis? Great question. I didn't mean to say that um, blood work is not useful. Okay. or that or that it's not information that we can gather it's you know the hair analysis and blood work it's all information and there's nothing wrong with information the question is how do you use the information and in our experience in many uh many paradigms are very reliant on the blood work in order to tell what's wrong and then the treatment is designed to correct the blood work values and oftentimes the blood work values will get better, but the person doesn't feel that much better. So it's kind of like we bolstered the system, like, you know, we gave supplements to support the system so that it's more like the, the numbers are better, but ultimately it didn't lead to like long lasting change. A lot of people will maybe have a, like a little bit of improvement and then they'll revert back because it was overly focused on those numbers instead of like zooming out. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 thank you. Colby, do you have anything to add to that? Well, that was great, yeah. And similar to Alex's comment, we call that green allopathic medicine. If you aren't getting transformational results, in our opinion, then what you are fundamentally doing isn't working. And so that's our expectation. Not every single person can potentially get there, but our expectation is that there's opportunity. Other questions? Hi, I'm Karen. Um, I am just curious if you have options for people who aren't local to Chicago and what kind of those offerings would look like. We do. Um, we are actually a completely virtual practice right now. Um, we were virtual through COVID. We maintained being virtual. It's a, it seems like a great experience for us and for our patients. Um, so we can do everything virtually over Zoom and phone call. We'll send you an evaluation kit that you can complete at home. A simple hair sample, a little finger prick, little blood prick. You send it back to our office. You can always get additional lab work run through your local doctor, through like Life Extension LabCorp. 
and then we'll have all of our appointments via Zoom and phone call. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? What's your favorite Counting Crows song? Are you asking me? Yes, you. Perfect Blue Buildings. All day. The first Counting Crows album is a work of genius. And I think sometimes we forget that. So go back and give it a listen. Okay, guys, last, last minute Alex. question. Oh, yes. That's my question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What was that, Charlie? What album is it? I'm looking it up right now. August and everything after. Sweet. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and if you guys don't follow us on social media, we produce a whole bunch of content. Thanks to Jess, who helps us out with that. So give her a shout out. We also have an online platform that currently is free starting here in May. We're going to put a whole bunch of effort into that as well. At some point that there will be a small fee for that, but give us a follow Haven Holistic Health free content all the time, trying to really spread the, spread the positive and just message that you can be empowered and educated to really get the health that you deserve. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you for everyone who posted on Instagram and supported us. You will be getting $10 tomorrow. Make sure you give us your Venmo handle. You can always email us. Um, big, big shout out to Tanner, big winner. And um, we're trying to do webinars consistently. So look out for in the next couple of weeks and we'll have another topic for you guys. Um, big love and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys.